Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello. Uh, may I speak to uh, Prince William, please? Prince William, Kate Hoods. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, he had called me originally, and I'm returning his phone call because uh, we have a nine one one situation. We have a DEFCON three situation. Okay, um, Wiggy, Harry, your dad has lost his mind. Yes, 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 yes. Your dad has lost his mind. I got the tabloids calling me. Uh, trying to link up with me to see if I can talk to you or uh, Prince Harry, you know, and just, uh, King Charles have run him up. Now, Camille is jo- enjoying herself as consort queen. She enjoying the hell out of herself. She's loving it. Every minute she gets a chance to be in the spotlight, she just be waving, talking to people, uh, peasants, I should say, or whatever. And Charles is like, she's just spending too much time. She she just talks and goes on and on and on, and um, we need her down here. So he pretty much just like busting with his security team job to try to get Camille to bring her behind on, okay? Bring her slow walking behind on and stop talking to all these folks, because we got places to be. Things to do and people to see that I want to see. Char- I mean, um, Prince William, it's time for you to take the brain, son. It's time for you to take the brain. Oh, your dad ain't gonna make it. Your dad ain't gonna make it because he can't. He, he what do you call it? He doesn't have a face to put forward where it's not showing frustration. See what I'm saying? If he's drinking, he hanging out at the polo club. He cool. He's running like a Cheshire cat. You know, he's enjoying himself right there. Uh, because he just started out, but of course, when he get 15, 20 minutes in, he gonna be acting an ass. But yes, honey, he was over there visiting with the Rickham uh, state or city or whatever, just seeing how they're faring, and uh, he just checking the status um, of you know basically what's going on, what they need, you know, try to uh, help them out in their county, right? And um, Somebody in the tabloid or the, the uh, paparazzi over there had got a video, audio tape with um, King Charles telling the security team to go get his wife. Go get her and tell her to come on, cause we got somewhere to go. And, he, and she shouldn't be talking to them like that anyway. She should stay with them. Only a, you know, a, a arm limp away from him. She don't need to be going and getting all, you know, friendly with the folks. She ain't gonna see him again. She ain't gonna see him again. But he, he was throwing a temper tantrum. And um they did call me back in November. Um, Prince William talked about your daddy. They said he was over there throwing uh he was smashing windows, uh, taking cheers to the windows, and of course, you know, glass was breaking. Now I don't know how true that is, but they said on November third of this year, he was clowning over there. So you might need to check it out. You might need to check it out because um I don't think your dad is doing too well up there in that head, okay? And we might need you to come a little quicker. We might need you sooner rather than later. Because Charles don't have that attention span. Uh, King Charles uh, don't want to have this responsibility thrown on him in his latter years. And when he wanted to uh, be out there doing a dog on thing, that look at Camille. Ain't she looking sharp in that coat and that hat? She doing that darn thing. She is doing that darn thing. But old me behind um, Prince Charles, the time has come. It has passed him. And then he's mad because old Harry and Megan over here in the States trying to put a documentary out on his behind. (laughs) Charles can't keep it together. So, William, I'm going to need you to talk to Camille. You're probably going to have to talk to her first to be able to get to your father. Because you just go straight to your father. Yeah, he doing out here in these streets and 
them fussing with his uh, aides, telling them to go get Camille. Uh, that's just not. They don't need to be doing all that. And the people know what we're talking about. If y'all don't know, I'm going to let you listen to the audio. Hold on. <laughs> Yes, Charles was saying he was trying to wait on her, but she just goes on and on, and she's still not coming. So he's asking his aides to uh, help him further along her uh, little behind, her little legs, her, her foot, to get Skippy on out of here uh, towards the okay? so She needs her to stay on point. Right now, she's falling behind. He don't like it, and he's being frustrated about it. So... Uh, William, I, I really think you need to go check on Dad, Pops, however y'all call him. When y'all in y'all relaxed state, you know, behind closed doors, do you call him Dad, do you call him Pop, or do you call him King? I, I don't know. It really doesn't matter. But uh, he's going to drive uh, Consul uh, Camilla King, Queen, uh, to a uh, straight jacket. Uh, she out there doing her thing. She's shaking hands. She's talking with uh, the elderly. She's talking with the uh, uh, baby boomers. She's just out there having a good old time because she was meant to play this part. She ain't gonna let uh, King Charles her husband rush her along. She don't get you about all that. She probably being out there. And it's a shame because neither one of them are wearing their mask and they said it's an upsurge of the Ovid. Um, so he's not, he's not doing well with that, okay? Because he should have had his mask on along with consort coming in. But again, it just is what it is. And uh, they're going to do what they're going to do all the time. But I, I really think you need to um, check out your dad, William. Maybe get a hold of Harry and see what he can do, you know, abroad. You know, maybe King Charles needs to come see us in the United States of America. You know, maybe just swing over. I don't know where he is. I don't know where, um, where I mean, uh, Harry is. He might be still in California. Him and um, the Queen uh, need to, you know, get away from the British Empire and just, you know, relax, relate, and release. Or at least we can just bring Charles on over there because me look like she having a good old time being the Queen. Okay, she loving all her uh, royalties and loving her hats. She's loving her outfits. And Charles just looking like a bump on the log. He don't want to be there. He didn't ask for this. At this latter part of his years living on this earth, and he can only blame his mama for that. Queen gone, dead ain't gone, okay? But he can blame her for that, for her sitting up in there, not willing to give him the throne. And she probably wasn't willing to uh, see him make a fool out of her and the rest of the court because she knew her son. She knew her son. And he so knew him with that old, with, with Camilla having an affair with her while he's with Diana. You know that one, right? Both gonna pay for that. God gonna make sure of that. But he just is what it is. But anyway, that's all I got. We need to talk to your dad. You need to sit him down. Maybe y'all need to go somewhere where y'all can, you know, have a nice scenery. And uh, y'all don't have, you know, nothing on the agenda to discuss uh, uh, when it comes to the work side of things. You just want to have a day with your dad or maybe a weekend. Just you and him and maybe Harry can go to the mountains, to the cabins or go hunting or something and bond with him that way. He, 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 he can up. He up there throwing chairs at windows, okay? Because he don't got upset. He's um, wanting the security aides to go Fetch his wife because he's tired of seeing her way behind him and he's ready to go. He's trying to keep on a schedule. I think it's called a schedule. I call it a schedule, but you know, the other way is schedule. And uh, the Britain way of talking, of course. And he, he like, he ain't forward. He ain't forward. He don't know why she wasn't behind him, but she should. He don't know why she was way back yonder talking to the peasants, okay? 
he didn't want her to do that. He said, I ain't got time for that. And he put fast in a hurry as his age to go get her. And I mean, go get her right now. Even if you have to drag her by her coat or her hat. Bring her here because I'm tired and ready to go. So, um, well, you go talk to your daddy. Okay? Go and talk to your daddy after you finish listening to me. Telling you what your daddy doing out there. Because you probably didn't know about those chairs he threw at the window. And he shattered them, broke them, and had to be replaced. And probably the common folks had to, you know, the common people that pay taxes over there. They probably had to pay for that stuff. So I need y'all to get it together. And don't leave it alone. Because all y'all want it to be where I want. I really would say that the boys, me and you, William, and um, Harry. Harry showed sure him want to be a part of no fool. He ain't want nobody to come telling him what to do, when to do, how to do it, and what to do. He don't want that. All right. That's why he is rebelling now, and he's over in California living his best life. Okay, ready to drop the key on the royal family and the comedy zone, okay, from his point of view. And we got, um, William, I know you're upset. I know you're upset because you really didn't want to be thrown in this. You probably don't want to be with Kate. You know, it's just this, uh, how you call it? You just got to, how you call it? You had to assume the position. Uh, it's almost like an arranged marriage type situation. You don't want to, you can't be with who you want to be with because you, you're told that you have to be with this person. But they have this certain amount of class and about themselves. And they come from a very political, well-raised, uh, real religious type family setting. And they think the other person is better for you. Um, we know, we know. I, I remember you telling me allegedly that you had a... Um, the twist with somebody um, right before you supposed to be getting serious with Kate. I know, I know. You broke your heart. Kind of like what Charles did with Diana, your mama. He really liked it, Camille, but he was forced uh, to think of the bigger picture, uh, think of his position he was going to have to hold. And they really didn't see Camilla like that in that position. Anytime. So they told you to go with Diana. Now go on, go with the Diana girl, okay? We don't pay for her. We're going to make sure her dad is good and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, she's going to make us some babies. And of course, we see what uh, her and uh, Prince Charles at the time made. It made a beautiful you and it made a beautiful uh, boy in Harry. But, you know, your dad is just upset. He's upset. He don't want to be father. He's frustrated that he has to be a part of a system where he has to make rules and regulation and regulations and stuff. But he don't even want to follow this. Uh, he don't want to follow suit either. So, this is my uh, plea to you to go and sit and talk with Dad and, and tell them time for people don't call me no more because I ain't got nothing to do with uh, Charles over there. He's just all crabby and he just want to go drink and smoke and ride on a horse playing polo. That's all he want to do, but he got thrust into the position because his mother finally kicked the bucket, you know, and um, and, and left him all in a disarray, you know. He, he probably didn't have time to really mourn. His mom um, didn't have time to throw alcohol on her casket. You know, like I said, I'm pouring some for you, mom. I'm pouring some for you, okay? So you can taste like I can taste whatever. I don't know what he and Charles are doing, but anyway, he's not happy. He's not happy in his role. And I understand it because he's used to doing things the way he wanted to do them and out of sight of anybody else trying to watch his every move. That's why his mama stayed up there. Now everybody catching his moods, his temper tantrums. Um, he's fussing with Camilla. Uh, it's just a bad scene, bad scene. If they're going to be uh, pulling the British out of the slump, you need to take over uh, of your father's brain because he's just doing a little bit too much. He's, you know, acting a little ass out here. And we don't need him to be looking that way over in Britain. We need him to be polished and on point and ready to discuss the things of the world. You know, the politics of how you're going to get down for the next five, six, seven years. Um, you know, he need to be on point. Because that's a position, a very hard position to be in. But he was next to it. Okay? And he ain't like it. He ain't like it. He ain't like it. He's been telling us in so many ways he don't like being gay. It is, it is what it is. Y'all you know, get together, two brothers, go and talk to your dad and, you know, see if you can work something out. You can call me if you halfway got a plan of action together. What you going to do with y'all? But if you ain't got nothing, you just as stumped as I am. 
uh, don't call me. Don't call. Don't send me no text. Don't send me no smoke. Oh, you know what the uh, what we call it? The Indians had a peace pipe. Don't be blowing those circles up there, thinking you're gonna contact me. Don't even be putting that in the air with a blimp. Going, Dale, call us in Britain. Don't, cause I ain't gonna answer. It's my last time talking about your dad. You need to do what you need to do. Okay. Succeed him, and that's all I got. I ain't got no more. And now, uh, you just call me when you're doing something else other than trying to talk about it. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.